Uh, I am the program coordinator for the Savannah River Archaeological Research Program. Uh, that is a division of the South Carolina Institute of Archaeology and Anthropology, which is a department of the University of South Carolina. Uh, our offices are located on the uh, Savannah River site, which is a Department of Energy managed facility, which straddles Aiken, Barmwell, and Allendale counties. Uh, the SRARP's primary threefold mission for the Department of Energy is, uh, number one, the protection of the nearly 12,000 years worth of cultural history on the Savannah River site. It's 300 square miles, 275,000 acres, and we've been an on-site presence for over 40 years, uh, protecting the cultural resources. Uh, tw again, 12,000 years. Uh, early Native Americans all the way up to the 1950s when the Atomic Energy Commission moved uh, displaced the 6,000 people that live there. Number two uh, is a research component. Uh, each one of us has uh, research that we do, and that research tends to dovetail with the resources. Uh, for example, Native American uh, research, we do some at Etowah Mounds in, 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 up near Atlanta. Uh, that research dovetails with what we do on site. Uh, I dabble a little bit in uh, the textile archaeology of Graniteville, which is here in Aiken County, uh, we actually had a couple of textile mill, or a couple of, we had a couple of mills uh, on the Savannah River site. That so again, that dovetails with those resources. And finally, outreach. We go out and uh, and do outreach, discussing archaeology, the importance of archaeology, why we do it, how we do it. Uh, in 2006, uh, on one of our compliance-related activities for the uh, Department of Energy, we were putting in a monitoring well, uh, and that survey took us across uh, a 1950s-era tenant farm. And as we were surveying across the tenant farm, one of the shovel tests uh, out popped a alkaline-glazed uh, stoneware sherd, and it had the date 1862 on it. And uh, immediately, those of us in the know that were standing around, we, we felt we had something, but as we began to uh, do the re remainder of the excavation, uh, many more pieces came out, and one of those pieces was inscribed with the name Dave. And uh, once we excavated the 18 pieces and um, put the pot together, it weighed approximately 19 pounds, and it had on it um, LM, uh, which was the initials for Lewis Miles, one of Dave's owners, uh, April 16th, 1862, and had Dave's name deeply etched into the pot. I'm not really sure how to explain it. There was a feeling about the pot. We were a little leery of actually how to handle the pot. We thought, okay, we manage these resources. We knew we had an important resource, but we felt is DOE going to come take it from us and it's going to end up in a case somewhere in Washington? At the other hand, because we are part of the university and there is a very strong tradition, especially with McKissick Museum, we felt, are they going to come take the pot from us and display it there? We kept it under wraps for about four years and um, really didn't do a whole lot with it. And finally, in 2010, I was asked to go to a, an outreach venue. And about that time, I felt, I, I just had this feeling that it was a good time to take the pot. I can't explain it, but it, it just felt like it was pulling me that it, now it was time for it to go out. So I took the pot to this, uh, an outreach venue down in Denmark, South Carolina, called the Salkahatchee Stew. And the pot was there, uh, and I was there with a, a good friend of mine uh, uh, named Mark Alberton. Uh, he's a filmmaker, and he made... Um, he, he did a film recently called Displaced the Unexpected Exodus of the Cold War, Un the Unexpected Fallout of the Cold War. And we were there together, and um, as the pot was on the table, people would come up and they'd say, that's a Dave pot. How much is it worth? Do you want to sell it? And the other side of the coin was people would come up and say, who's Dave? I've never heard of him. So as Mark and I left that afternoon, we were writing back and we got to talking that there's a, there was a whole story, part of Dave's story people just, they, they don't know. They either don't know who he is or they only see him for the monetary value of these, of these vessels he created. So that was uh, uh, the inspiration, the catalyst uh, for an idea that we had to do a, what was supposed to be a short five-minute documentary and turned into a two-and-a-half-year, 47-minute uh, 
extravaganza that just seemed to keep going on and on. And, 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 and the more we got into telling Dave's story bit by bit, it seemed like more would come out. And, and at the time we decided to do it, there seemed to be this perfect storm of Dave about taking place. Again, the pot had been around for four years. We hadn't done nothing with it. And then all of a sudden, once we have this idea to make this pot, uh, the University of Illinois had announced that they were going to do their excavations at Pottersville in Edgefield. Uh, Leonard Todd, author of uh, Carolina Clay, his book was just coming out. And of course, we've always had a, uh, an amazing um, uh, resource in Steve Farrell and Gary Dexter, uh, Justin Guy, all these local potters who work in the Edgefield tradition and, and as they're working in it, tell the story of all the local potters and in Dave particular. So, and Carl Steen is another, an archaeologist who's, who's done a lot of work uh, in the potteries over the years. So you, you, we had all these resources, and then we had our story of the excavation and discovery of what we now call the SRERP Dave jar. And uh, it all just really came together well and, and, and started coming together as the story that we ended up telling in the, in the film. How has Dave changed my life? Well, it's, it's um, I, think, I think overall bigger, it's, it's a Dave's story in the way that we got to tell it allows us to, to remind people that, um, you know, the enslaved bondsmen, there's a part of their story that a lot of people don't think about. That is the fact that they were uh, master craftsmen, brick makers, uh, the carpenters, iron workers, potters. Um, Dave, ironically, in a way, the film allows Dave to be the face of so many of those that we don't know their names or, or who they were, who, who were these master craftsmen. Again, the irony is we don't have a photo of Dave, so we don't know exactly what he looks like. But, but you know, through his story, we get to learn more about, uh, you know, these magnificent works that is these unnamed and unfaced uh, people made so long ago. So, so it's allowed me to help to tell that story, which I'm very proud. I'm, I'm very proud and honored that I get to walk around with this pot, number one. But it, I'm very proud that I, I get to help tell this story. Uh, and because of it, I, you know, I've had a chance, I've traveled all over the country. I've, I've traveled to, uh, up to Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's home. I've traveled to, to New Orleans. I've traveled out west several times uh, with film festivals and been invited on to, to give talks. And so I've got to travel a lot and share his story with people who had never heard it. And a lot of times after telling that story, uh, uh, people will come up to me, and mostly in African Americans, and say, you know, you know thanks for, for sharing a side of the story that I've never thought of, or, or, or giving a, a um, for lack of a better word, I guess a positive spin to something that is, that is so dark and so negative that, you know, here's this light, here's, here's the story of a man who, you know, who... To today, 150 years later, is still speaking to us, and you know, his verses can be interpreted, I'm sure, many different ways. But uh, a lot of times, it comes from the heart how you want to interpret it. Uh, you know what what Dave was actually saying. So, and I'm I'm proud to be a part of that story. Uh, we began doing when we began doing the research on the pot uh, in Dave. One of the first things we, we looked at was the date, which was April 16th, 1862. That's the date that's engraved on the pot. And uh, one of the first things, of course, you do you could do today is you just go online. You type in the date up and what comes up. And so uh, we were very uh, surprised at what we found. And then, of course, we went and did more research. But the date, April 16th, 1862. So, you know, let's, let's put that in context. You know, here in South Carolina in April, it's, it's very hot. And, uh, you know, Dave is throwing his pots. He's made this pot, and he dates it. Uh, you know, uh, he's a slave working, turning his pots, out in the weather, maybe to turning shop. Either way, it's, it's, it's tough. 700 miles away in Washington, D.C. on that same day, Abraham Lincoln is putting into a, um, he, he's signing a, a, um, an amendment 
freeing the slaves in Washington, D.C. Now, this is not the Emancipation Proclamation. This comes later. But this is the freeing of the slaves in Washington, D.C. itself on that same day. So, you know, we, we've done the research to try to find, was, did Dave know this? Was the pot maybe backdated? Uh, we've really not found anything per se to, to say that Dave knew what was going on. Uh, it appears to be coincidental, but, uh, you know, it's just one of those coincidences that really, you know, makes you think, you know, here, here Dave is working as a slave on the same day, you know, 700 miles away, slaves are being freed. So, so the pot, uh, you know, when you tell that story also, it, it brings the history alive. You know, once we realized the significance of the date, we, we went to the Carolinian Library on the USC campus, uh, looked at many of the papers. Uh, we looked, uh, uh, looked at months and months before the April date and after the April date, looking to see if there was any mention of the fact that, uh, that Lincoln had signed that uh, proclamation. And we, found, we didn't find anything. So um, it appears to be a coincidence. It's not to say that Dave wouldn't have heard it, but, you know, most of the more conservative papers in the South, you know, wasn't going to be putting a, an article in the paper stating, hey, you know, slaves up north have been freed, because uh, that really wouldn't have uh, helped to help the cause in the South at the time. So it uh, may have caused more problems. So, but. What we do with the SRP pot so many Daves that we know of are in museums or private collections. And the SRP Dave pot does travel. Uh, it goes out and, and people can see it and touch it. And, you know, I've had it in the back of the truck and brought it out in the middle of the woods for kids to see it. Uh, you know, it's traveled uh, again across the country. It's, uh, uh, you know, where, wherever we're at, the pot comes out and people seem to really connect with it when they could touch that history, put the, rub their name, their, their fingers across his name and, and really connect with it. So it, it brings, helps to bring the story alive even more. I, I'm honored that I'm able to, to, to carry it around. Uh, uh, I, I, can't, I can't say that I, don't, I haven't come to a special connection with this, right? Matter of fact, right now, as of yesterday, uh, I left it in possession of the Aiken County Historical Museum for the next month. And uh, as I was walking out, I, I, it was, I, I, we were laughing. I said, take care of it. You know, it's, it's, it's been a while since it's been away from me for this long. But, uh, you know, I'm honored and I'm humbled that I'm, I was somehow chosen. I, I don't know. The pot, again, the pot was locked away for six years, four years. Uh, the pot was locked away for four years. Um, we started telling this story, and, and, and it, it kind of fell to me in the office, and I'm humbled to be able to take it around and tell the story. Uh, again, I'm honored that, that I'm the one that, uh, that uh, has made this connection to do this. Uh, I've met so many wonderful people, uh, people I probably wouldn't have met. I, I've, I've, I've been invited to places I probably wouldn't have gone, uh, and... Uh, and so to be able to tell Dave's story, uh, to help tell his story, again, I'm just, uh, it's an honor to be able to do that. A funny anecdote was, uh, I remember in the early 70s, I, I grew up in the area, I grew up in the valley, and uh, I, I lived here. And uh, I remember my grandmother just an off-the-cuff comment talking about someone found this pot signed by Dave and it was worth some money. I don't know what they would have been worth in the 70s, but I, you know, at the time, I'm sure it would have been more than we had. And, and being that young, I didn't understand what she meant. To me, a pot was what I saw her cooking on the oven, stainless steel or cast iron, cooking the collard greens in or the peas. So uh, I remember somehow... All of us kids, this, it must have been something in the paper, I don't know. But I remember all the kids, we played in the woods a lot. So we were looking for a pot, you know, with the name Dave on it. You know, we had no clue what we were looking you know, Every time we'd kick over an old stainless steel pot, we'd pick it up, and there's no Dave name on it. We, we didn't understand what it was. So, so the name Dave and that whole connection has been with me for a long time, just the idea that, 
And then as I, of course, as I got older, started you know, studying history and got into history, I understood Dave's story. Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that we would discover and excavate a Dave vessel, much less I'm the one who now got, totes it around and you know, carries it around and, and visits with it. I really would have, that would, the wildest dreams, I would have never thought that would, I would be doing this. But uh, he's definitely become a major part of my life over the last four or five years. Dave, I think Dave all the time. Uh, I really do. It's, it's something, uh, you know, especially, especially getting the film out and, and trying to promote his story. You know, Dave is always right there in the back of my mind somewhere. So, uh, and that's not a bad thing, you know. And then sometimes those verses of his, I do think of a few of those that, that helped me through the day. <laughs>